Hello, and welcome back to Dragonfall. So last time, remember, we just started off this, since I'm still doing returns, I might as well do Dragonfall as a follow-up. So let's continue. So now we start at the Krispasa. Krispeg, home to nearly a half a million people and until very recently, Monica Schaefer. Once a melting pot of cultural diversity, it's now a chaotic mess of wealth and poverty, crime and commerce, anarchy and control. It's also home to your little slice of Britain. A neighborhood that locals call the Krispasa. A safe port in the eye of a storm. The ride back to the Christmas hour is quiet. No one's in talking mode as the van veers past potholes and garbage piles. The glare of street lights and neon signs plays across your window, painting the world in a kaleidoscope of garish colors. Soon the van rounds a corner and skids to a halt in a narrow, crumbling alley. This is as far as Bel Berlin's chaotic streets will take you. Your team wordlessly debarks the vehicle and climbs down into a disused section of the U-Bahn tunnel system, a well-kept secret, providing your team safe passage into the Krispasa. Your safe house waits on the other side. Let's get inside. <clears throat> Can't have it fast enough now. Sit in your kitchen. That's the knocking kitchen. Let's see what Step inside and the squalor of the disused Yuvon tunnel gives way to the warmth of your safe house. A man waits inside, silhouetted against the dim fluorescent lighting. Something bad is up, is it? He steps forward, revealing a pale and expressionless face, like glinting off of steel rimmed glasses. Paul Amsel, your team's fixer and landlord, part deal maker, part information broker. One of the most well-concerned men, well-connected men, in Berlin. His eyes sweep across the team as he takes it all in. The grim faces, the hard stares, Iga's fury, Monica's absence. I have a feeling. How did she? His face is going to have swallows. It takes a moment to chew on the words before spitting them out. How did it happen? Something in the vault security system cooked her brain too quick to be black icy. Why not? Her motions robotic and spare. Monica died of a biofeedback induced stroke. That's right. I got thrust a glove finger to your chest. And this idiot stood by and let it happen. Learning what to look for. 
muscle contractions and micro tremors are good indicators of a Deccan's distress. I'm assuming you didn't have anyone keeping an eye on Bells. No, if you had, my friend would be left dead in a basement. I shall off I go. We are all on the lookout for physical security, Lance included. Throw him under the bus isn't going to help anything. Under the bus is exactly where he belongs. Aga turns to face Dietrich. She towers over him, but he stands his ground. I respect you, Dietrich. You know that. But you don't have my training. None of you have. Monica's good. She was the best. But she was also overconfident. She treated the job like it was a game. Do that long enough and you're going to get buried. Aiga turns her focus back to you. If you've been paying attention, you'd have figured all this out on your own by now. You've known that Monica needed watching as much as that door. Enough, Aiga. Amso's voice is hoarse. Expression blank. No, no, enough. Aiga pushes ahead. Heedless of the interruption, her voice remains measured. But there's a fire in her eyes. How many seconds pass between Monica's first convulsion and her blood getting pulled? know how much damage biofeedback can do to a Decker's brain in five seconds. <sighs> I, I don't... You don't have to answer that. Of course you know. Monica died while you stood there and watched. This is all your f That is enough. Anzil's voice comes out more. His fist smashes down on death behind him. I got you and Nance can have it all later, but I have had enough. We need to talk action. A client sent you into something much bigger than he led us to believe. I want to know why. I tell you, they were supposed to be Micron. This was supposed to be Micron! reason why we need to find him. We saw something back there. Something that we weren't supposed to see. It's fair to assume that we're all still in danger. He pauses and warms his temples. Agreed. And to neutralize that danger, we need to know who we are dealing with. Let us review the events that transpired tonight. The smallest detail could be important, so hold nothing back. Monica lived long enough to say a name. Fjörslings. She fought hard to tell us. It must be important. Amzil seems taken aback. He pauses for a moment before responding. You'll have to forgive me. This brings back many unpleasant memories. While you raise an eyebrow, fire me. The most terrible of the great dragons. Those are those who would disagree, but they never experience the terror of living in a shadow. He glances at Gorn. You are far too young to remember, but of course, but for Germans of my generation, the name Shower Sons is synonymous with kills, destruction, and death. The dragons of the day are subtle teachers, full of patience and Gaia. Shower Sons was not. At her awakening, she was only for the most advantage that claimed tens of, uh, tens of thousands of lives. Comes a taste deep breath, slowly releases. There's a hot one inside. Those were dark days. Countless men, women, and children slaughtered. 
roasted alive in homes by a creature religion. No hope for salvation. And no way in sight. It was a horror that you cannot begin to understand. What stopped her? I can't imagine that a rampaging dragon would just go away on its own. Eventually, this hiring was brought down by a man named Dr. Adrian Fakir. Well, with the help of the Uthwaf, of course. But he was experimental weapons designed by Dr. Fakir that finally pierced her hide. She fell into a hail of bullets and rocket fire and crashed down into the radioactive wasteland of the Essex. This event was called the Dragon Fall. Safe at last from the Dragon's Wrath, Germany celebrated for Claire as a hero. Our own Siegfried, a modern day Dragon Seal. My own family practically worshipped the man. The dragon fall was as important an event as you make it out to be. I'm not surprised I've never heard of it. Those early elves of the awakening were Tom Hart took regular. Not just on a national level, but on a global scale. More species of awakened animals were being discovered daily. Within two years of the dragon fall, the act of Yosef magic had a ton to the world. A new source of terror for a bewildered public, and in 2021, the sunny mountains of orcs and trolls gave rise to yet another wave of global panic. In light of such time, I, it is any surprise that Dr. Fakir and the firing from Forgotten, Dragon's Way of the Business. Here are the stones. Again, all of this happened a decade ago. To the best of my knowledge, the story of Yasing, Yasing is a bit of historical trivia and nothing more. Alright, so Monica spent her dying breath trying to tell us about a long dead dragon. I guess sweeps her eyes across the group, searching for a glimmer of insight. Finally, she gives up. Any ideas as to why? Umsa's voice trembles with frustration. No, it doesn't make any more sense to me than it does to you. The dragon for his ancient history. The old things has been dead and gone for 42 years. But there's one thing that I don't know. Whatever Monica saw, whatever she was trying to tell us, it was important. He visibly struggles to calm himself, takes a deep breath, and slowly moves. I will look into this, and I will find answers. In the meantime, did you turn up anything else of value? I say it was a front for whatever was going on in that basement. That's not just clear. One minor enterprise either that utility took serious funds to build. And um, there was more to it than what we saw. Places like that don't spring up overnight. All in all in secret, yes. whoever they may be. For none to please by your escape, so what else did you find? After everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military grade armor. He appeared to be head of security. If it is not much to go on, do any details about this all come to mind? Any distinguishing features that I could look into? He was an older guy, hold on. Um, the sound of his voice, I'm guessing mid to late forties. Pretty old one. And he had skin grafts. Most of his face looked like replacement material. If the grafts came from a legitimate hospital, there may be medical records. 
cut or something. I didn't see it, but I can't find out. Did you note anything else during the run that maybe I'll tell you? That's all we got. That's not much. Amzumat, <sighs> his face drawn and haggard. This is an angry face, mate. Middle aged old with skin grass and a long forgotten round of them. Whoever sent us knew we were walking into, we were set up. That's obvious, but why? Paul's face reddens. I... I warned her. I told her not to take this run, but she assured me that it'd be cakewalk. You didn't bring it to her? No, she said the, the whole thing herself. Monica was approached recently by a man who calls himself Green Winters. He was he used to be a prominent activist in the Earth State political scene. I never much liked the man, certainly never trusted him. But now Monica, she would do anything for her cause. Anything for the folk state. Winters swore that the data he was after was crucial to ensuring the future stability of the flukes. And that's all it took. You sound like Green Winters is our best leader. Yes, most definitely. It is clear that Green Winters has involved us in something much larger than he read more. When he finds out what happened on the run, he's probably gonna rat us. We need to chase him down before that happens. So we need information on him. And we need it fast. There is a man here in the Crispasar, a dark named Altug Burak Kazi. He owns a little Soika shop that's just down the way called Café Seve. Seve. This man is a purveyor of information. I have done business with him from time to time. And you think he would know something about Green Ventos? Mm. Then I discovered Monica's renewed association with Green Ventos. I contacted Altuk. One of his people have been keeping tabs on Ventos ever since. As I said, I did not trust the man. For good reason, it seems. I'll talk to Aug and see what he knows about Green Winters. But best to be cautious in how I work. Should I go to meet him? Yes, tell him I sent you. I will do what I can to dig into the information that you've uncovered already. Sparse as all. Cool.
one day. Now you start towards the safe house door, a large four-legged form steps around the corner. Dante, Monica's dog, an enormous mongrel of indeterminate breed, a low whimper emerges as he enters the room, head hanging low. Oh, shit, Dante. Petrie shakes his head. Don't worry, we'll look after you. At the sight of Monica's dog, Amsel's eyes well up. He inhales, but can't quite catch his breath. He started whimpering about an hour ago, turned into a full blown hole, wouldn't stop. Yeah. Close his eyes. That's when I realized something bad had happened. Looking down into those. Huge brown eyes you see, intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. Oi. Here. Dante takes a treat in his mouth, but it's clear he has no appetite for it, and the jerky drops to the floor. He leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your leg. The dog's going with you, Lance. Amzo takes a ragged breath and releases it. And a slow, melancholy smile is played across his face. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in the mountain. Ret <coughs> Return to the safe house when you're finished with Altlund, my friend. With a little luck, we can help us locate Green Hunters. And we can get to the bottom of this. And now I think we shall all take a moment. Beatrice, turn your head at your approach. An aging face is traced with a network of faint scars, the legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious that the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all this, there is still an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Welcome. I've got this bottle of schnapps that needs shine. We've got a foreign comrade to drink to. To Monica. Proof! The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear. As you raise it, to, you catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. It tastes of sweet corn and molds, with a lingering aftertaste of buttery toffee. He swallows swig, then returns the bottle to Dietrich's outstretched hand. He takes a long pull on the bottle, then locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, Master. What made you choose to come to Berlin? There are my reasons. Such as, of course, I'm just trying to figure out who I'm working for here. I think that deserves. I think I deserve to love that much. <sighs> Member of my crew betrayed me. Ain't that a piece? I can handle all sorts of things, but betrayal always makes me see that. Uh, I know the feeling. I tried to make him answer for it, but the bastard got away. A direct cotton on A friend. Dietrich takes another swig from his mouth and shrugs. So he got away? But who knows, right? Maybe he'll catch up with you someday. So, after all this went down, you decided to bail out the rude plex and head to Berlin. Am I getting that right? More or less. There wasn't much left for me and the rude plex. Monica made it out. 
made a hell of an offer. Ah, oh, yes, holy God. Beatrix raises his bottle again, then closes his eyes and takes a long drink. After a moment he passed, has passed, he returns his attention to you. All comes back to our God, doesn't it? So let me ask you, just what was your relationship with Monica anyway? I know that you also knew each other way back, but she was pretty coy about these things. Why you wanna know? Monica was my friend. I guess that I just wanted to get to know her better. There were so many areas of her life that have always been a mystery. And if you could share any light on them, I'd be appreciative. I can agree. I can respect that. So what was the deal? So what was the deal between the two of you? Don't leave me in suspense. We were rivals. She could as much not from anything you or Monica said. I just had suspicion. But anyway, good on you both. Beatrix raises bow to you and so do. She was a wonderful woman, and I hope that your time was together was happy. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time, and the bottle's almost empty. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy. Beatrix takes a final pull of the bottle and tips it forward, pouring the rest on the ground. Rest in peace, Monica. We miss you, God. better. The Dwarvish tech vendor smiles at you with practiced ease, her almond eyes twinkling with a glare from a dozen trade, trade screens. She speaks in a crypt, heavy, accented German. Welcome to the data heaven. Can I help you with something? I need some tech and I'm on a tight schedule. Show me what you got.
Cerca de CD. John Goldschmidt. Hello, my friend. The voice that comes from a man in chairs is enormous as the owner. Deep, booming roar, dripping with unrestrained mirth. Hi, Dave or so careful, yeah? Yeah, it certainly is beaut- From the back of the store, the voice of the shopkeep cuts you off. Don't mind the fool in this year. He roars like a traumatized woman, stewing all day in his own sweat. The man behind the bar at Goldschmidt. The, go the man behind the bar glares at Goldschmidt. His upper lip curled in disgust. I only fold our 18 only because he takes his strike off by the bucket. Goldschmidt responds with a raucous belly laugh. Apparently, he finds the shopkeeper insults to be hilarious. Ah, uh, old talk, my friend! You are as quick as it is dropped on as ever I bought to you! If you. I'm out of here. The man behind the counter looks right past you and at the dog behind. The dog following close behind. Dante! I'll fetch his water dish and perhaps a coffee for a friend here. So I cap luck. The Turk looks disgusted. Very well. A foot. Coffee. As in real coffee, not soika. Yes, for individuals with a fine taste, I offer genuine bean coffee from my native dark here. The cafe owner looks you in the eye, the tone of his voice grows and all his ears. This is top shelf. This is a top shelf item, my friend. And not for the general public, only for those few discerning connoisseurs who can properly appreciate it. I'm the sort who can appreciate it. Tell me about the Turkish coffee. It is unpicked by my family in Turkey, true delicacy of the sixth world. This was considered a luxury even before the awakening, where bean coffee was everywhere. Every street corner, they say. Cause he leans in close, lowering his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. Long hours in the shop have perfumed his body with the commingled scents of coffee, incense, and applewood tabasco. Trust me, if your coffee experience has been limited to a slight cough, you must not deny yourself this opportunity. You will see God. You saw me, how much? This is a specialty item. Delivered at some cost. I cannot part with it for less than 15 million a cup. Here! Very good. Because he hands you a ceramic travel mug. Uh, because he. Burakazi hands you a ceramic travel cup. Which he then fills to the brim with dark, steaming liquid. The scent is intoxicating. Is there anything more I can get you? Fill sense as regards. When he hears Amsel's name, the Turk voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. His eyes take on a knowing look. Oh, very good. Please express to Al Amsel my appreciation of his patronage, and if he needs any more catering jobs seen to in the future, I'm always happy to provide. He tells me you're developing the menu for a friend of his at Winters, I believe. I want to hear all about it. Yes, yes, of course, a wise one. Come here! Come! A young woman bustles in from the back room. 
Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. Brakazi spits something out in rapid fire Turkish. As you wish, Uncle, I will see to it right away. Kami offers you a shy grin, snaps her gun, and hurries back into the room that she came from. My god, Kami is arranging to make contact with the chef as we speak. This will have to take some time. My chef's a busy man. Why we wait? I wonder if you would. Be so kind as to run a small area for me. Sorry, not really. Hate to trouble you, I, as I am embarrassed to ask, but I would be most appreciative of your help. Of course, El Burkosi. Burkosi. No trouble at all. Otok's voice lowers to nearly whisper. Oh, this area is deeper. Highly valuable. I've been storing number of data tabs to Berlin's fiber optic network. It's part of my civic duty on this tab. These tabs provide free matrix access for all who lives in the crisp zone. In order to maintain their, how do I say, their anonymity, each tab's protocol buffer must be reset every few days. I simply wish for you to visit each tab, each data tab and reset it. Simple enough. Yes, yes, it's a simple job, time-consuming and a bit tedious, perhaps, but simple. Just reset the taps and come back when you are finished. And there should be three of them scattered around this neighborhood. The first is just outside, look for a metal box with yellow arrows painted on top of it. By this time of your turn, I should have the information out um, so requested. Okay. Okay, the tabs. <laughs> Let's get to work. Something about the young elf behind the counter makes your breath catch in your chest. She's lovely to look at, but it's a strange kind of beauty. Her eyes are large and luminous and impossibly green. As she looks up to you, you can see that her irises are flecked with iridescent gold. Hello, and welcome to Algernon. Perhaps I can help you with something? As she smiles up to you, her eyes are fixed on yours. A curious feeling of witnessness fills your chest. It feels as though you're floating in a warm, calm sea. A gentle current pulls you closer to absentee. And the sensation is pleasant. As you drift, the golden specks in her eyes begin to move. The golden specks in, her, in the elf's eyes shift and swirl, slowly picking up speeds, mem mesmerizing. All at once, the specks explode into light and color. Absentee's eyes and now feel your field of vision. It feels as if you're drowning in an alien sea. The patterns traced by the shimmering specks in your eyes are kaleidoscopic, enchanting, nearly impossible to turn away from. You are lost. Your entire world has been reduced to a churning vortex of green and gold. Dimly, you become aware that something is happening. You feel your body being buffeted by unseen forces, and suddenly everything goes blank. Slowly and painfully, you struggle your way back to consciousness. The shop's owner, Algernon, is peering down at you, an expression of concern on his face. Absentine stands beside him, her expression one of embarrassment. 
Welcome back, friend. Algernon extends a hand to help you to your feet. Azentine shifts slightly to allow you to stand. Wait, what was that? What happened? My fault and my apologies. Sometimes when I daydream, I bring down as young part of my idea, but unintentional, yes, but there's no harm done, correct? You'll be fine. No harm done, if you'll excuse me. I'm going to go stay in the corner for a while. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'll see you later. I got work to do. That's one. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Good night. Okay, where is this at?
A bizarre monument tires before you. At the top of the pedestal, the form of an angel stands, its outstretched wings looming over the small park, with the material strange and uneven, giving the statue a cold Frankenstein-esque appearance. It appears that the artist has welded this monument together from various mouse scraps and pieces of junk. As you approach a small grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers dimly to light. The grainy face of a smug young orc appears on the screen. Hello there. I'm Herbert Kunzel, creator of this monument. What would you like to know? This is my tribute to victory, the victory of Anarchy. It is both a citation and parody of the statue we destroyed some 20 years ago. You may remember it from the history trides as the Sigasu or the Goldes. It is obvious, the Sigusse, a monument to the hubris of the Prussians that gets blown to bits. So some of them takes on lots of bits and builds a monument to the hubris of Anarchy. What did they say? I am the visionary Herbert Kunzel from the Lond Romeo. You might know me from... Okay, well, there isn't much I'm known for y yet, but I intend to change that. All art is born from misery, after all. That's fine. That's two. It's no obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. My tone pitch adjusted voice began speaking almost immediately. The soccer writer's contact for this kiosk is no more. Lance Dragon is listed as a follow contact. This is our, this is a only this is all this is our only secured line to this kids. Please listen to the following instruction carefully if you are a supporter of our cause. We have a phone both in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, a town here and submit it via port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undocked copy of it onto the matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you will be compensated for assault after information returned to this location. Uh, keep an eye on. Okay. As you are resetting the data tab, you notice that someone has duct tape a home a small homemade receiver to the system. An earplug dangles from the receiver. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find you can make out two distinct voices. A nasal woman who sounds like a heavy smoker and a man who speaks in a high-pitched, breathy tone. Yes, hey, Monica, need to verify. Good for us. A sound like a conveyor belt starting adds to the noise of machinery, and you can't make out anything else until it comes to a stop a minute later. Take our next step. Wait. 
Is it ready to make a move yet? To be patient. See who steps up. Could be someone more. More conveyor belts to start up. Or you can hear as the sound of machinery. Some sort of motorized vehicle starts up, crowding out everything else. A bell rings loudly again and again. It sounds like a telephone. You hear the sound of a door slamming shut, and the noise of machinery is suddenly muffled. There is a rattle of plastic, and the ringing stops. An Asian woman's voice can be heard in the sing song. Golden Tag, how may I help you? Silence. That tone changes because of love. It's like, I had. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. What do you think I am, an idiot? The council needs to meet again. I know getting everyone in the room is. Challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, the Crispa Saw is only stable because of her. If she really is out of the way, well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, I know, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux sometimes. The near sound of a door opening again, and a the cacophony of machinery fills the line. I can't make out anything more. Triage cyber Back to the coffee. I'll talk smiles at you from behind the counter. We'll come back on our scene. Effendi. Welcome back on our Effendi. How may I serve you? I finished with your little trifle air boot for a cousin. Ah, very good. I assume you had no difficulties. Difficulties? No. One of the tabs have been modified a bit. Someone was using it as a surveillance device. <laughs> oh, say, wow. I would be surprised they won't. This is very not all. In the flux, everyone's spies. If you do not spy, how will you know who is in power and who will be in power next? If you lay, if you are to stay here, Fendi, you must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish bath with sweat, as my uncle Tanemia always says. Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait, there's more. I wasn't on the tab and heard something. Might be important. As you closely, yes. Oh, tell me, oh, listener of keyholes. What was your hair on this surveillance top you were jammed? Couldn't make out much. There's a woman and a high pitched man. They seem pleased Monica was out of picture. Tux face falls. Those travels fell somebody. There's two unknown to me, is there more? Woman got a call. She talked about council meeting tonight to decide they should make a move. Then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. Now it's grimly most excellent it is indeed for torches that you discover this information. It was not unexpected. I would have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. I'm very interested in this, so let me know what happens. Hey, let us return to our pressing business. He bugs a stream of rapid fire Turkish, and the gum chewing young woman comes hurrying out to the counter. The menu for air, I'm sorry, Uncle. Tommy hands you a folded piece of paper. Inside is a memory stick. 
Please extend my consolations to him. The death of Fraulein Schaffer must have hit him hard. Brakazi gives Tommy a small nod. She, and she hurries out of the room. When she's gone, he hurries his attention. He returns his attention to you. Please express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. If you don't know how important. <laughs> the memory stick Tommy just handed you contains all the information at Amsel requires. Uh, the information stick Tommy just handed you should contain all the information at Amsel requires from our ship. In the field, should we require my services in the future, you'll know where to find me. Until good day. I will see myself out, thank you. His eyes are bloodshot. His expression grim. Did you get the information? How could you miss it? Yes, I spoke to Altog. He, he gave me this memory stick. To see what his agent has to say. Amzel snatches the memory stick from your hand and slots it into his computer terminal. He navigates a series of command line menus and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Ansel scans it, mouthing the words as his eyes flip back and forth. Brakosi's agent Ted Greenman goes to a hotel in the cesspool of the keys called Drogenkipe. The hotel is called Das Kieselhaus. It is a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of Drogenkipe. It appears that Winters is not of there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs over control of the neighborhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Vientos into the, uh, inside the hotel, but he confirms that he has since the Well, what are we waiting for? I guess slings her rifle over, over shoulder with a single spare motion. Get up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Gloria and Dietrich's boss. Exchange looks with them. It's just a moment I got. Amzo rises from the chair, drawing himself to full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look her in the eye. You are an excellent soldier. Nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe that Lance is the right choice to lead the team. There's a long pause before Aiga speaks. When she does, her voice comes out dull and flat. Right. Don't mistake this, de this decision for a recommend. Mulekad considers your contribution to the team to be invaluable. Uh, we, all, well, we all know that she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. I got speaks through clenched teeth. Her words are measured, but expressions limited. This is unbelievable. You want to put the rookie in charge again. Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Lance is the reason we're still alive, I got. He kept us together. He let us out of there in one piece, making him your golden boy. She sounds tired, 
resigned, but above all, disappointed. This is more of your flux state it is said for present. Each reaches out, puts his hand on my shoulder. It's one moment complete. Aga's voice tightens for a moment. She, her control slips and her face contorts her people. Yeah, look what that got her. She's right into her full body. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission and survival. Everything else is distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place on a shadow run. What can I say? What a gentleman! Yeah, but you see a strong pretty to come across. <sighs> Screw it. Let's put an end to this. Never had the scale and experience to lead the team. When Sunny on hand was appointed by Monica as a joke. But if you're out of but if you're out of he take the lead, I'll buy it by it. I want to hear each of you say it. I'm no quarrel with you, girl. You stay out of this. She snaps an armor finger into your chest hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and he lets out a low growl. Reflectively, she takes a half step back. I think we know what Dante has to say. That's what my poet Lance said to our eyes back in Bayama. You may not believe it, but he is. The way I see it, that means I follow his lead for. His voice is uncharacteristically gentle. I trust in Monica's judgment. Therefore, I trust in Lance's judgment. The score should finish, Ica. I was going to speak softly, but tone firm. Lance will take Monica's place as leader of the team. Well, you know what? I'll do whatever it takes to keep this team and Monica's legacy alive. That includes taking your advice, Aika. That's big of you. She looks from Dietrich, Glory, Amzo, finally down to Dante, and then she sighs. I don't agree with this decision, but I will respect it. She nods again, more decisive this time. Lance takes the lead, then conversation goes. Time to move on. We need to focus on chasing down wi green winters. Indeed. I have transferred the information that we have received from Altolga. To the computer, terminal in the next room. Used to be Monica's personal workstation. Lance, not yours. Monica has kept a variety of notes and dossiers on that machine. I would suggest reviewing her notes when you have time. Amazon turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. Called Hunting. I will equally await your return. I wouldn't suggest driving to drop your key. The rules aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be fast anyway. Thanks for your time, Baiga. U-Bahn it is. Baiga nods, then turns to check her equipment. The rest of the group disperses in turn. command a team of Shadowrunners. When traveling to new mission locations, you'll be able to choose which members of your team to bring and modify their loadout for the run. When members of your team become permanently incapacitated on a mission, they'll automatically they'll be automatically extracted from emergency medical care. They'll be 
patched up and ready for action next time you return. You're safe. You return to your safe house. Avoid this loss of firepower while I was carrying some Bumona trauma kits into the field. They can be purchased at the street dog's office in the Christmas Island. Station and mission computer. The command center for your team's operations. And your last link to the memory of Monica Schaefer. Her thoughts and words live on in the machines. At times it's easy to forget that she's gone. The cool blue tones of the workstation main menu fill the screen. A blinking message in the upper right corner notifies that you have notifies that you have zero unread messages. To the sash. So we're going to take the U on. Where would you like to travel? Assemble the team and travel to Dusk Kissel Host Hotel to search for green rooms. Yeah, let's go. So this will lead us to the drug bit. And we'll be dealing with that madness in the next part. So stay tuned. More of Dragonfall. Right after this. Thanks so much for watching.